What's going on you guys? I'm Mitch from Anytime Soon and this is our gear rig rundown. Alright, this is the, my guitar amp that I play for all the rhythm. This is a PV5152. It's an old one. It's the same as the newer 6505 pluses. And um, I actually got this from a friend, uh, DJ, who played in a band called Outlier. And before him, it was actually in another pop punk band called Terror on the Screen. And... Uh, this has been played on Warp Tour before, so it's got a little bit of local history. And before, or when I got it, it actually had white and red faces on the front. So I took it back to the black cloth, and a lot of people don't know, I actually just cut up one of my band shirts and put it in with all the emblems on it. So that's kind of cool. But I had this worked over. It's got... a uh, JJ 6L6 tubes in there and the rest of the AX7s are electro harmonics and I had all the old rings that hold the 6L6s in they were riveted from the factory I had them drilled and bolted in so you could rebuild them easier but uh I really like this amp it might be considered a little bit too hot or heavy for pop punk but growing up listening to pop punk and metalcore a lot of my favorite guitarists use it, like Neil Westfall from A Day to Remember, um, Lee Malia from Bring Me the Horizon. I know Motionless used the 6505 Pluses for a long time. And uh, yeah, it works for me. It, if you tone it back, it gets a good middle of the road pop punk tone. But if I really need it hot for heavier songs, it could certainly bring the noise. And I've got that on top of a Mesa... Uh, rectifier cab and it's a closed back it's oversized it's got two vintage 30s in it and pretty much does everything I need for any time soon this is my Fender Bassman 250 and it's been used in any time soon the for every show minus one but uh, even when I wasn't playing bass it's been around and I got this used years ago and it's been used and gigged and abused for a long time. Uh, it's got a 15 inch eminence speaker, does everything I need. And I got these custom scrims put on a long time ago. At first I just put them on with like black duct tape, but I eventually tacked them in. But this thing is a beast and it's been through hell. And uh, recorded the first DP on it. Can't complain about it. Like, honestly, it's been in New Jersey, New York, it's been in the rain. I've, I've put on those casters, like, so many times. I think, like, around where they're supposed to be screwed in, there's, like, just, like, ten holes around. Because <laughs> when one strips out, just drill it again. <laughs> you know, it's breathable. It's just like a mesh. Yeah. But uh, you could still, I mean, 99% of the time, you just direct out into a PA, so the speaker's not really doing anything. Right. It's more for show. But you could still mic that up if you want. It's a breathable material. And uh, all I, like there's no official way to put it on. At first, I just used black uh, duct tape on it. But then I put like uh, tacks on the side. Uh, this is my Marshall Valve State ADV. I haven't used it a whole lot. I've used it for a handful of really small gigs where I didn't really need like a 100 watt head and a 2x12 cab. But uh, it's... I actually got it from my uncle and it was my great uncle's and I had it worked over. The power supply has been replaced, the reverb tank, so everything runs good, but it was a really hot amp and it kind of complements the 5150. But, and uh, it's a hybrid amp, so it's solid state, but it's got like one preamp tube, so it sounds good at all levels of volumes where like, all the tube amps that I have, they kind of need to be opened up to sound the way they're supposed to. So if I'm playing a smaller gig and I don't have a lot of space, I've taken that out before, it sounds good. So this is my Fender American Special P bass. Uh, I bought a year, it was actually the first like real bass that I bought. 
and um, I used it for the first like six months to a year probably with the band and there's nothing wrong with the guitar I really like it but I think I just moved to a different direction but uh yeah this I think this was a Guitar Center limited run it's got the honey burst with the satin finish and they originally came with a uh, white pick guard but at some point the person before me put a tortoise shell on and I think it looks way better and uh, I really love maple necks uh, not all my guitars are, but I just love the way they look. I don't think it makes a difference in the sound or they feel a little bit different, but love my maple. But yeah, I still have it around. And this is my Fender Blacktop Strat. It's like a limited run in the early like 2010s. It's really unique because it's a double fat Strat or it's got the HH which gives it like really fat full sound but still retains all the cool features of the Stratocaster like it's light it's comfortable I love my strats but I, I just need that both humbuckers for that big sound I haven't done anything really aftermarket to it but uh with all my strats I kind of tighten the bridge down as much as possible because I don't use a tremolo for anything I really do and uh I put five uh springs on the back to really lock it down and uh i think it holds tuning better i really can't complain with it but this is like my go-to guitar this is my fender five string jazz bass i have recorded every anytime soon song on this which probably surprises people because everything we you can play everything on a four string and that's what we usually do live but uh i love the way this sounds because, uh, like I was saying with the P bass before, I definitely wanted a more like spankier sound, a little bit more grindy, and the jazz bass kind of brought that to me. But I actually bought this. It's just a plain made in Mexico standard uh, J bass, and I stripped everything except for the neck and the wood. So I put in Seymour Duncan quarter pounders. This was a loaded plate that I got off Reverb, so it's got like CTS pots, orange caps switchcraft input jack it's got premium usa electronics and then i put in this hip shot uh kick-ass bridge and it's high mass bridge so and it's got more adjustment from the factory i love that and i put the black pick guard on so this sounds great in the studio the only problem is i probably never play it live with the band for long sets because it's really heavy but uh, other than that, it's a great studio guitar. And uh, yeah. This is my Fender PJ Mustang. I bought this and I played it after the precision bass because I really like the short scale basses. And Fender had like not really had a lot for a while. And then they came out with these and it's just a standard series. But it's got a 30 inch scale compared to... A normal jazz or precision bass which is a 34 so it's a little bit more comfortable to play and uh, plays more like a guitar and I'm a guitar player first but uh really comfortable it's way lighter than the other ones and I love the P and J bass configuration of pickups because it gives you the best of both worlds it gives you the nice rounded bottom end with the P bass pickups but you still got all that spank with the J bass pickup and uh, it's kind of cool they got a three-way toggle switch on here. It uh, doesn't bother me too much. I don't really hit it while playing or anything, but really like this guitar. It's comfortable to play. And with the short scale, it kind of gives it a little bit of a different sound because the strings are have four inches less on the scale, so it's a little bit slinkier to play too. But uh, the only thing I did to this one is I put this vinyl stripe on there because I always thought it was cool growing up seeing Kurt Cobain playing the competition Mustangs, even though they're guitars. But uh, I always thought the racing stripes looked awesome, so I definitely wanted one. Uh, my buddy Andrew Radziki put it on for me. This is a really old Epiphone. It's a PR350B. My friend got it off Craigslist in Pittsburgh for like $50. And uh, I kind of took it home and cleaned it up a little bit. But... It's not a terrible guitar, but 
definitely more of a beginner one. And I used it for a couple acoustic shows, acoustic sets for any time soon before I could afford a real one. We actually used it recording on the last track of our first EP, Someone Worth Saving. It's like the last 20, 30 seconds or so. So it still gets an honorable mention. And this is my Taylor 314 CE. Uh, this guitar is awesome. I got this from Northeast Music. And it's a funny story because it was a Taylor Find Your Fit day. And I, it was a giant snowstorm. So no one was really there. I drive a Jeep, so it didn't really bother me. And I really wanted to go get something. It was around my birthday. And so it was me, Jackie Papers, and a sales rep from Taylor Guitars. So I had the shop to myself and I kind of tried everything out and all their floor models and we decided on this so I picked it up. So I love it. I play it on a lot of the new songs for the new album we're working on. It's definitely in there and a lot of our acoustic gigs. Like we had a photo shoot when we played uh, Show a Tiger's Jaw. This is the guitar that I had so I love it. Alright so this is my guitar pedal board. Uh, nothing fancy and to be honest I could do without most of the things on here but it's kind of just for like noises and soundscapes in between songs but this is a Electro Harmonic Small Clone. I got that because like I said before I'm, I was a big Nirvana fan and it gives a nice watery effect for cleans. It's kind of shimmery or leads if you want. And same thing with the Electro Harmonics Hall of Fame 2. That's just my uh, reverb pedal. It, I, I'm a big fan of the TC Electronics stuff. I've been using them for a couple years. And, you know, same thing as almost a small clone. Just gives a little bit more depth and ambiance for cleans and stuff. This is actually a boost pedal that was custom. My sister actually built it for a class at the University of Arts in Philadelphia. So... Use that for just a little boost, a little extra heat on leads or something. I've got an Ibanez TS9, because like I was saying before, like I was a really big fan of Neil Westfall's Tone and uh, Lee Malia. Uh, I don't really use it that often, but uh, you know, it adds a little bit more oomph. I like, I, I don't like using distortion pedals and overdrive pedals. I usually like it to all come from the amp that's why i use like super high gain amps and stuff but it, you know it's there if you need it and it's just a regular dunwop crybaby wah i've had it a long time and uh this is a tc electronics polytune 3 uh they work perfect i'm able to see them i ended up just mounting this sideways because that's how it worked on the pedal board but it works fine and for power supply, I have Voodoo Labs Pedal Power 2 Plus. Actually got it from uh, our old guitar player, Adam. And uh, I had space on my board to top mount it because most people mount it underneath. But when you've got a lot of different connections going on and you need to troubleshoot something, it's way easier to see everything you need right on top than flipping over your board and moving wires. And everything's right there. It's easy to see. And even my power, I just plug it in right on top. And the space in between down here, that's just where I put my channel selection for whatever amp I'm using. So the PV or the Marshall, it just goes right there. Switch between dirty and clean channels. But yeah, this one's filthy, covered in dust and beer from gigging, but it gets used, so that's the way it is. And uh, for cables, the, cat, the patch cables are probably a hodgepodge, but for my actual cables, I like using Monster. They've got a good warranty. Uh, can't complain. One breaks, you send it back, they give you a new one. And over here, we've got my bass pedal rig, which is... Uh, Nothing fancy. I got the Polytune. I think that's a two on there, just my tuner. And uh, I've got a Boss Distortion DS1, which is actually a guitar pedal, but I pretty much never use it live for anything, but I had it laying around. And if you want it, it gives you a little bit extra grindy distortion bass sounds, kind of like a Rage Against the Machine or Beastie Boys or something, which is totally nothing that we do, but... It's kind of just there. And both these I've got mounted on pedal train boards. I believe the 
bass one is a nano because I don't really need that many pedals playing bass. And for guitar, this is a Pedal Train Classic Junior, I believe. Yeah, Classic Junior. But it's a good size, and I don't really change anything out that often, but it's kind of got everything I need.